Good afternoon, everybody, from a very wet and miserable afternoon in Europe. Uh, good morning to those of you on the other side of the world. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to those in the USA. Thanks for taking time out to join us as well. Uh, so today we'll be looking at one of the new features in Capture One Twenty Three, which is faster culling and uh, the cull view. Before we get to that. Uh, and before we dig into those details, uh, if you're on YouTube or Facebook, welcome. Uh, if you want to ask a question, please do. Uh, some of you have figured out how to do that already. So if you put a question, sorry, if you put uh, a comment in YouTube or Facebook, that will come through to me and then we can deal with those questions. For those of you hanging out inside uh, the webinar room, if you find your way to the Q&A tab, that just helps uh, to separate out those questions from the chat. So pop those in there and then I'll be able to get to those as well. Now there is rather a lot of you, so if we don't get to your uh, particular question, I do apologize, but we will do our best to uh, get to as many as possible. Okay, so today, let's just shift over to Capture One. Today we're gonna to be talking about faster culling, which is a tool that en enables you to do two things. So two different ways we can use this. We can either use this when we're importing from our memory card, a little tiny memory card here, to help decide which ones to import, or if you prefer to import the entire group of pictures into Capture One and then do sorting, you can also do that. So we've got two different ways of using the same tool with a couple of different variations. So the first, method we're going to look at is importing from memory card. Now before we get overexcited and put this into our card reader, a couple of comments about cards and card readers. So what makes this possible? Let's bring up this camera. So what makes this possible is that your digital camera, whatever it is, when you're shooting to your memory card, inside the raw data is already a previously generated preview by the camera. So you've got the raw file and you've also got a smaller JPEG preview. So that is what we're using to bring this feature to you. So it's worth keeping that in mind. And the reason why that's important, I'll explain a bit later. But um, using this method, we're not having to read any raw data. We're using the preview that has already been built by your camera for speed and efficiency. Now, to make sure you've got the best performance out of this, there's a couple of things you can do to optimize it. And I'm talking about the best case situation. It doesn't mean you all have to run out and go and buy this card reader or change all your memory cards. Um, I'm talking about optimizing the process. So if you look on your memory cards, you'll see a speed indication. It'll probably be too difficult for you to see and the camera won't focus. But at the top of this memory card, there's a megabits per second, so this is 250 megabits per second. It's not the fastest memory card out there, but it's close to being the fastest. Card reader wise, this is my, what is it? A SanDisk Professional, which means a professional price, of course. Um, it's an enormous card reader. I don't know what's kind of going on from here to here in terms of electronics, because the card sits uh, in the front here, um, but it is very fast. So we get a good transfer data speeds. Now I do have a card reader on my MacBook Pro, which is just over here out of sight. And I have another card reader on my Thunderbolt dock, which is um, also good, reads cards, but is it as fast as this? No. So just because you have a card reader built in or on you know, some external device or whatever, doesn't necessarily mean it is the fastest out there. So testing this one, this guy is significantly faster than either the built-in card reader or the one on my Thunderbolt dock. So if speed is of importance, then invest in something that's gonna optimize uh, that for you. Um, there's quite a big price jump when you go up to the 300 megabit a second cards compared to the 250. So for me, it's not worth that investment. For you, if you're dealing with volume and want speed, 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 then it might make sense. Okay. So that's the lesson on card readers. So let's plug this guy in and I am going to put this card in said card reader. So let's do that. And let's get rid of this camera view for a second. And straight away, let's turn that off for a second because we're skipping ahead. Um, straight away, you're gonna see the contents of that memory card. If it doesn't show up, then you can always 
point to your memory card in the import from part of the dialog here. And by default, you'll see this grid view indicated in this button up the top, which will show you the contents of the memory card. Now that read pretty fast, that was 887 photos. They are also from a Sony A7R4, my one, not a five, boohoo, always the way, buy a camera and a new one comes out. Um, but that's fairly big raw files, they're not compressed. So I don't know if I can see in the info how big the raw file is. So 117 megabytes per file. So pretty chunky and that speed ingest rate is fast. So fast card, fast reader to optimize that. Now, of course, we see the whole contents of the memory card. Uh, if any of you watched the launch live stream that I did, I'm using the same content here, mostly because it's ideal to demonstrate this particular feature, because I've got a lot of shots shot on, you know, high speed frames per second on the camera to catch various moments and so on. So we've got lots of similarity, which would be nice uh, to group down. You'll notice if you're on Capture on 22 or older, there's a new tool here called Group Overview and also the filters tool here as well. So what the group overview does, and there was a question uh, in the webinar room about uh, can we group by um, time? Yes and no. This is actually doing something a bit better and a bit use more useful, which is grouping by similarity. So if I turn on enable groups, then you'll see this little grouping worm wiggle its way across. And this is reading data from the card. So you can't see my card reader now, but the status light is blinking. So again, this makes sense why to have a good performing card and reader because we're reading the data off this card. Now you can see once that, uh, what's the word I'm used, looking for? Analysis of all the photos on the card has been done. Again, that was 900 pictures and you can see that was pretty speedy. They've now been put into groups of similarity. So Frank, you are asking about can we group via time? So this is grouping via similarity. So it doesn't matter if you took a bit of a pause in between uh, shooting the same shot, they'd be grouped together based on the content of the photo. So if you look here, you can see we've got, you know, various different groups. So we've got a group of eight here, we've got a group of six, we've got a group of 22 and so on. Now this similarity slider over here, this will decide on the size of the groups basically. So if I have a greater similarity, so if I make this similarity slider greater, I'm gonna have smaller groups because I want the photos to be more similar. So the grouping is gonna be smaller as you can see. So subtle variations between these two have made them sit in their own group. But if I take this down a bit, you'll see like those two pictures have joined up, these pictures have joined up and you know that's looking pretty good. Now notice also when I adjust this, Capture One doesn't have to do another analysis of, of the data. So that's been cached. So that scan of the photos only happens once. So which is good for speed. So that's part of the puzzle or the new things uh, for this. But if I um, turn on the viewer, we can see a slightly different experience. So let's go to the first one. So I've left everything on this memory card. This is the entire contents of what I shot over two and a half days in Iceland. So it's got all the crappy stuff um, and it's got the half decent shots and of course all the that similarity shots as well. So now when I go into this view, we get a slightly different or quite a big different view of, of the photos or the content of your memory card. So we have two columns. Column on the right is the groups. Column on the left is the content of each group. So you can see I'm in the first group here, which currently holds two pictures. Now this is where your keyboard shortcuts come in. Very handy for fast navigation. So if we have a look at the overhead camera, then what we're gonna be looking for is using the cursor keys. So these guys here. So if I tap on my right cursor key, that's going to advance to the next group, which only has one photo in it. Amazing picture, as you can see. If I go to the next group, that has four pictures in it. If I want to look at any of those four pictures, I can use my up-down cursor keys like so. So going through these groups, uh, you can also see the speed at which I can navigate. Why? Because we are only reading that preview off, uh, sorry, the preview that's embedded 
into each of those raw files. We don't have to read the raw data. So you can see how quickly I can nip between those pictures. So let me just find a group of something which I know is a good kind of analysis of, of something. Let's find, yeah, so something like this where they're all very similar or something like this. You can see the speed that I can whiz back and forth as well. So let's take our handsome man here, for example. Let's just hide that, that camera so you get the idea. So you see, I can go backwards and forwards really quickly using those cursor keys. So no delay, zero delay in browsing back and forth. If I would like to check on my focus, I can double click and that will go to 100%. And again, that's reading directly off the memory card. So again, speed of memory card, speed of reader is important as well. And now I can flick between uh, these two different shots and decide which one is the sharpest. Now it's only had to read that data once and then it's cached. So if I wanna make a quick decision between these two in terms of focus, I can see I've got some motion blur going on there. This one is fine. So what I'm gonna do now to pick that picture, wrong button, what I'm gonna do now to pick that picture keep an eye on this box over here, so just on the right. I'm gonna tap my space bar, and now that marks it for import, like so. So really, you've got a, a nice combination of shortcut keys <coughs> and using your cursor keys on the computer as well. Uh, let me just answer a couple of questions, so we have a quick pause. So Pavel says, is it a kind of object detection? Yeah, exactly, so it's just uh, image analysis doesn't have to be people. I'm gonna show you some animals in a minute just to do something completely left field. Um, does the grouping work with hike files? Yep, that's fine. Uh, it doesn't have to be um, raw data or anything like that. We're not even using the raw data, as I've said. <coughs> um, <laughs> nice comment from Rui. Until now, photojournalist, concert photographer, or sports thought they needed another software to cull their images, but not any more, more. Capture One performs at all these areas. Well, we hope so, but based on a couple of other comments I can see, like Vincent says, can you look at them side by side? Not currently, but we're already looking at ways in how to enhance this, this view. So right now I can whiz back and forth. Helps if I'm in Capture One. I can whiz back and forth nice and quick. So to make a, you know, can't go any faster than that with my, with my fingers uh, to make a good decision and then use that space bar to mark that one for import. Um, if we just go down, I'm not gonna import a bunch of pictures because you get the idea. There's Taylor Jackson, you might know him from YouTube. Uh, we've got a big group of pictures here. So looking at those shots, I can quickly decide which one I like. Let's take that one. Let's have one of Taylor, why not? Not very exciting picture of rocks, David. Um, and then looking through these three, let's grab that one and so on. So you get the idea. It's really nice and fast to move through a collection of pictures like so. All right, uh, another quick check of questions over here. Uh, let's see. Um, how to cull faster. I can't use stars or color with keyboard in cull tab. Yes, you can, Bertrand. We will look at that in a second. Um, Evan says, I know Sony records a sequence number and burst mode on multiple shots. Is Capture One going to use that data for grouping? I would say if there's any of those uh, enhancement features that you would like to see, uh, the best thing to do is to pop those in a support case. So go to our support.captureone.com and make a feature request. Um, and the more people who do that, the more people who you know vote uh, for looking at things like that, the more likely it is uh, to, to come up. So please put your requests in. This, this feature is in here based on user feedback. So the more we get of that, um, the better. Uh, Tim, you've uh, you know highlighted something else. It would be nice if we could start our keywording process here and so on. So all those things, please get those uh, requests into us. The goal of this one was to make sure the performance was on par, uh, which it is, and to give you, you know, the ability to group into similarity as well, because that's part of the annoyance of that process. Okay, now can I 
use star ratings and color tags with shortcut keys. Yes, you can. So you just need to perhaps check uh, to the customer watching who couldn't use shortcut keys, check what your shortcut keys are targeted at. <clears throat> so what I would do is in this particular view, I only really use the space bar to tag which photo that I want to have imported. So in this case, I just use my space bar, I go to the next shot, go to one of these, for example, and I'm just using the space bar like so. Now, if I see a shot which I think, oh wow, that could be one that I really want to edit straight away. So if we find something in one of these sequences like this one, think, oh yeah, that would be a cool shot that I want to look at immediately. Did I get it in focus or did the camera get it in focus, to be honest? Yes, I did. So I'm going to mark that one with the space bar, like so. Just checking you can actually see that shot. Yeah, I'm going to mark that one with the space bar. And additionally, using my numerical keys, we've got one to five for the star rating. So you can see it's this photo down here. One to five for the star rating. And then we've also got or I personally have, I'll show you where to set it, seven, eight, and nine for color tags. So seven is green, eight is yellow, nine is red. So I would think, okay, I really wanna make sure I edit this one first, so I'm gonna mark that with a green. Now, if you're struggling to get your keyboard shortcuts working, then what you need to do is just check under edit keyboard shortcuts. Once we've imported, I'll just only import these eight or so photos, then we'll look at edit keyboard shortcuts. So you might be on the default, which is using, um, can't quite see if we move it over, plus for green, minus uh, for red, I think, and star for green, possibly, or yellow. I can't remember. But I find having them all on the numerical keypad is much, much faster. So seven, eight, and nine for color tag, six clears my color tag, one to five for the star rating, easy. All right, let's um, import uh, these photos and then we will just look at how that works. We can also filter over here. Now, I don't tend to use the filtering tool if I'm importing off the card. I will do that if I've dumped the whole lot into Capture One. So we'll look at that in a bit more detail later. But an important note about the filtering and about the flagging for import Let's say for some reason I close this import window down. Let's do it. So let's, for example, if I close the import window down, let's go back into my import window, like so. Let's go into my um, grid view for a second. Then the good news is once uh, it's sorted out, let's turn off enable groups. We don't need that actually. You can see my green tagging over here. Hi, you. My green tagging over here is remembered and the photos that I've flagged to be imported have been remembered as well. So if you've gone through like 600 pictures and then accidentally shut the import window or need to do something else or get bored and want to shut Capture One down and walk away for a bit, then that flagging and those color tags will still remain. So that's super important. Okay, let's just import uh, these photos. So let's copy them into a folder. Uh, let's make a new folder called Iceland. There's only eight pictures. I'm, I'm not going to import buckets of stuff because you know how that works, I would hope. So let's import those pictures. So you can see that one's popped in with the color tag, like so. So what I could do in my filters tool, if I wanted to get to those all important pictures, first of all, I could filter to green and then I could start editing that shot straight away because I was so happy that I got it in focus. They weren't so happy because their feet were very cold after that experience. So that's how it works in the import viewer. So don't forget your shortcut keys. Don't forget that grouping. And remember the grouping only needs to happen once, once it's done that analysis. And then you can adjust that slider free will as you go through your pictures. Um, a couple of people asked about deleting. So let's just turn that off for a second. So what I do if I want to delete, I use my shortcut key and I mark them as red, like so. So that's nine on my keyboard. And then once I've imported, I can just blitz those ones. Or I could choose to only import the green and so on. So there's lots of different ways you could use the color tags. There's no hard and fast way to do it. 
Okay, uh, Pavel says, uh, I do mark red all photos with family members. If it could be done automatically during culling by utilizing object, de object detection, it would reduce my sorting time. Great suggestion. As you know from smart adjustments, I hope there's already some facial recognition going on. So there's all kinds of ways that this could evolve. It's just important that you give us your feedback. Okay, a uh, little other check on questions. Uh, Diego's also in the room. He's beavering away, answering uh, questions on text as well. It's not me managing to do it both at the same time. <laughs> Uh, that's a good question from Jordan, actually. Is there a book that explains all the functions in Capture One? We've got two choices. You can go to support.captureone.com and there's a whole user guide there. If you want to buy a book, there's an excellent book uh, called Raw Capture Guide, uh, which if you Google that, Raw Capture Guide for Capture One, that will pop up. That's a great resource. It's got everything about Capture One in there as well. So I would thoroughly recommend that. Um, okay. I'll let Diego soak up the rest of those questions. He's gonna be busy. <laughs> um, Deed says the culling tool only works for imports but not for ex existing directories. It does as well. And that's what we are going to do next. So if I go to and the reason why I picked this one again is not for the quality of photography because this is me messing around at a wildlife park, but because we have similar photos, some are out of focus, some are in focus and so on. So it's a good, a good test of the culling tool. So what we need to do for an existing collection is to hit this button in the top of the toolbar, which is the cull button. Now, if you don't see that, right click on your toolbar and say customize toolbar and then you'll find the cull view where are you right here and you can drag that to any spot on your toolbar incidentally please take some time to customize capture one there's lots of different ways you can customize it an important step of course is to always save your workspace now if you've updated to capture one 23 recently and you're in a panic because you've lost your workspace, we always back it up automatically. So you can see we've got backups or my backups from older versions. And these are various workspaces that I've been saving as they evolve because I'm always tweaking and tuning it a little bit as well. So my recommendation, you know, bring to the surface things in Capture One that you use regularly, hide the stuff that doesn't make any sense to you. So if you don't shoot tethered, there's no point having a whole tool tab devoted to tethered capture. So get rid of that and evolve your workspace over time. Okay, so we're in a collection of pictures. So all we need to do is hit the color button like so. Now you'll get a similar view open up that shows you the contents of the, the uh, particular collection, number of photos at the top. And then if I want to group them, I can enable the groups again. So it's all exactly the same so if we turn on groups this will be a bit faster because we're reading directly off the hard drive not via a card reader so the data transfer rate is going to be much faster but then the principle is exactly the same so we've got our different groups i can have smaller groups if i make the similarity adjustment higher and larger groups if i make the similarity adjustment smaller which can be adjusted at any time uh, if we go into the viewer Actually, I'll drop that down a bit because these guys, bonus points if you can identify the animal. Um, these guys, <clears throat> let's go to the first one because like so, we've got eight shots in that and you can see I was trying to be clever and not use tracking focus and barely any of them are in focus. So, but it doesn't matter on the subject matter. It can be people, it can be animals, it can be landscapes. It really makes no difference. So it's not biased to any kind of particular um, subject matter. So same as before, just to refresh. Left and right to go through your different groups, up and down to go through the particular group, and then double click to zoom into 100%. Now important note here. 
So we are still using the preview embedded in the raw file. So let's take a picture which uh, we know is actually in focus. So this one, let's mark that green. So I'm gonna hit seven on my keyboard. Let's mark green. So this guy here, you can see it's uh, tagged as well. So let's do a few adjustments to this. Um, let's bring up the brightness a little bit. Let's do something with the levels, maybe not that much. Don't need exposure warnings on. Let's throw in a vignette like so, and let's take the saturation down a bit. So I've done a few edits to this picture. Now, let's go back into the cold view and notice that it looks different. So look, if I just move it out the way for a second, you can see the color toning and representation is different because we're still looking at the preview embedded in the raw file. So if I make this super dark for a second and go back into the cold view, you see it doesn't match. So this view is really designed for performance. Like so. So it's not a color match between the two. So even once we're in Capture One and we go into the cold view, we're still looking at that preview. Now you might find, depending on the speed of your computer, I'm lucky, this is a, an M1 Max, so I can zoom to 100% and I can browse between pictures, you know, nice and fast. But if you're on an older machine and you know recalling that raw data is a bit slower, you might find using the cold view is actually going to help you for speed browsing purposes. And of course, you've got the added benefit of the grouping as well, which definitely saves you a bunch of time. So what I would use this view for is if I've dumped everything onto Capture One and then I want to go through a process, this is where I'm more likely to use color tags and star ratings. So as I said, my preferred would be color tagging. So if out of all these shots, if I want to pick one, I just hit seven on my keyboard. Seven again for that one. Because I've got, you know, super similar shots here on burst mode, then it's a case of color tagging the ones which I know are going to be the best shots to look at. Like so. And then once I've done with that, I can either filter here if I wish, so I can filter this view down, I'd turn off enable groups, and then I can see my final selection. And of course, that's gonna be reflected back in the actual pictures itself, which once more, I could filter if I wish, like so. So I would use uh, a workflow of me personally. You might do it different. Green is the good shot. Red could be ready for deleting. Um, yellow, you're not sure star rating for quality and so on. That's totally up for you, uh, up to you. But if you wanna have a marker for delete, I find red, red tag makes the most sense. So it definitely makes more sense to use filters in that view. Okay, um, let's have a look. Um, sorry, I've got half a question there would be helpful if we could have the import viewer general, I mean, when it's already imported. Not quite sure what you mean, but do you mean having the grouping tools in the main workspace? So you could clarify on that, which is something could also be a consideration, but there's a few technical reasons uh, I won't bore you with. Uh, what lens was this? Uh, it was a great lens, actually. I know that's a, a sidetrack, but let's check in the metadata. It was a Fuji X-T3, I think, and it was an XF200 with a 1.4 converter. And it was brilliant, actually, because it was nice and light to carry around. Uh, super fast, I find the autofocus was very good, and the quality is pretty nice as well. So that was a, a winning combo for that. Ed says grouping could be good for focus stacking. Yeah, if you've, if you've gone out shooting landscape or product, and you've got a bunch of uh, uh, different products, then yes, that could be nice for grouping as well. Um, we've heard requests that it would be nice to auto sort those into different albums. So again, if that's a useful feature for you, please let us know as well. So there's lots of different ways this could be enhanced. Okay, that pretty much describes the uh, uh, culling feature to you. So in summary, if you're importing from memory card, let me just eject this memory card so I don't upset my computer for a second. 
should be ejected. So if you're importing from memory card, don't forget if you want to have the bestest, fastest experience, fast memory card, fast reader, have a look into the specs of, of what your built-in card reader is doing. Said it's not great on my laptop, it's not great on my Thunderbolt dock either. So it's worth investing in faster cards and faster readers. Don't forget your shortcut keys, enable those. Oh, well, that's what we were gonna look at. If you find your keyboard shortcuts aren't working for you, edit, edit keyboard shortcuts. And then I would use this search function. So if we're looking for, you know, adding the numerical keypad for color tagging, just type in green. And you can see I've got adjustments, color tag green is seven, like so. The default, as I said, is quite different. So just have a look at what your keyboard shortcuts are set to. Red, you can see is nine. Yellow, whoops, helps if you can spell, is eight, and so on. A nice little tip, um, if you want to select by certain color tags, like turn the filters on and off, what I've done in the past, so my green, if we just bring up green, green color tag is seven, select by color tag green, or sorry, filter color tag green, if we make that command seven, like so, that shortcut. So now you only have to remember one number, basically seven is green. So if I go to uh, seven, it will obviously green tag my photo. Let's just clear this selection. Filters tool, where are you? So let's clear my filters. So if you remember, I said seven, tap seven on my keyboard, that's gonna tag green. If I do command seven, that's gonna filter to green, like so. See that added my filter. So command seven, if I toggle that on and off, that's gonna toggle my filter state. Seven itself is just gonna add a green tag or take it away from a photo. Cool. Um, David, see, again, everyone has their own system. All my picks get two stars when imported, three to keep and one to delete. Another way of doing it. Green is developed, yellow need to develop, and other colors for different stuff. So loads of different ways that you can shake it. That's, uh, I like that, David. That's a good one. If you want to join us on more live stream experiences, uh, we have a few coming up next week. Um, so I don't know if you've been following it, but if you have, we've been looking at a workflow with Capture One Live. So Capture One Live is our collaboration tool. Uh, so we've done a couple of parts already, which are up on YouTube. Uh, so you'll be able to see them. If you're on YouTube right now, they're literally on the front page. Uh, so part one and part two with Quentin and Yan, looking at Capture One Live, how you can use that as a collaboration tool. And then I'm just pasting a link in the chat. And part three is next week, where Yan's looking at his editing process. So that's editing in Capture One, less about Capture One Live. Uh, but if you want to see the whole series together, then watch uh, those recordings. Also coming up in um, December, they're not up yet on the Learning Hub, but they will be soon. Uh, Jan Vishman, our ambassador, who's also working with us on Capture One Live, is going to show his editing workflow in Capture One with another uh, photographer. They've got some great work. And also Rachel Ross-Jones, who's a Canadian landscape photographer. We're having a gear-focused webinar, as we love a bit of gear, on how to handle cold weather. So how to handle yourself, how to handle your equipment, uh, what you can do to make sure you are safe and your equipment is safe. So that's coming up. Tomorrow is Black Friday, but Black Friday sales are abound already. So if you're looking to upgrade to Capture One, there's some great offers uh, on captureone.com, up to 50% off across the store, and that includes styles as well. So if you're looking for styles or to upgrade, then go to captureone.com and check out the various different offers that we have. Good stuff. So I hope you found that useful. As I said, I didn't think it was going to be an hour. It would be hard to talk for an hour just on culling. Not very exciting. But try those tools out in the import window uh, and in the cold view as well. So I hope to see you all next week. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy Thanksgiving if that's what you're up to in the USA. And to everyone else, uh, take care and see you next week, hopefully. Bye now.